Hello, my name is Juan Felipe Patiño Zuleta and my partner is Amari Trogos. And today we are going to explain how to solve the Kahn Hilliard equation by using advanced numerical integrators. So, first, to solve the Kahn Hilliard equation, which describes the separation of process of microspecies phases of a mixture, in this case, we select uh, a mixture of two species initially with concentration. Uh, with, two, with a range of minus one to one, minus one for one species and one to another species. Uh, for the initial condition, we take a field of 128 by 128 field, and this one is the, the differential equation which describes the field, the <laughs> energy coefficients, and it has two Laplacians. Uh, to solve this uh, phenomenon, we, we are using three approach. The first one is in the space domain using uh, Euler forward time evolution uh, method. Then we use two schemes in the Fourier uh, domain. The first one is the also an explicit Euler forward method, and to see the more to see more acquire, more stability in the in the equation, we implemented a second order semi explicit BDF uh, AB scheme. So in the first case, when we are considering finite differences, we consider a randomized grid of 128 by 128 nodes. So we impose periodic boundary conditions, which means that the 0th and the 128th nodes correspond to the 128th and the first nodes respectively. We take a time step of 10 to the power minus 6 with 12,000 iterations, and the value of A, which is the gradient energy coefficient, is 0 0.01. A value of A is equal to 0 implies dynamics governed by a purely bulk diffusion process, whereas A equal to 1 means that the system evolves through interface diffusion control dynamics. The second order differences with an explicit Euler scheme is given by the following equations. Here the first equation shows the evolving of the concentration term in time where Cn plus 1 is the evolution at the new time step and Cn is the previous time step. Here Fij is the bulk coefficient term given by Cq minus C. Ij is the corresponding indexes of every node and as you can see it's a central difference in space with second order accuracy. In the second scheme we use a finite difference approximation. In the second in, in the second scheme instead of using a finite difference approximation we use a, an explicit forward Euler scheme for the time and spectral differentiation for the spatial domain. From the equations you can see that the concentration matrix is taken to the Fourier domain by doing a Fourier transform, a fast Fourier transform, and then we find the evolution using an explicit Euler scheme as given by the second equation. Cn plus 1 is the, the concentration of the new time step which we are using by the forward explicit Euler scheme using the, the previous time step. Here C cap denote the concentration in the Fourier space. Kappa is the same as A in our equation and C cube minus C is the bulk force term. Here K is the matrix of the discrete wave numbers in the x and y direction. In the third approach, we use a semi-implicit backward difference adam bashford method. So we treat the nonlinear terms and the linear terms separately. The nonlinear term, which is the bulk force term given by C cube minus C, is treated explicitly, whereas the linear term of, of Nabla to the power 4, where we take the double Laplacian of the concentration is treated implicitly. This scheme is much more stable as it as it treats the nonlinear and the linear terms separately. Here we use the second equation to start off our iteration at the first time step when t is equal to when n is equal to zero that is the first iteration. We find the concentration at the first step using the second equation here and then once we have it we can start off our iteration for all the subsequent time steps by using the value which we obtain in the first step. So now I'm going to explain uh, briefly the, the first code in the space domain for central difference. So first we define the initial condition as the energy gradient coefficients, the dt, the number of nodes, and the final time. Then we define the matrix, giving zero values uh, and for the number of nodes. Then after defining the matrix, we define the first value on time with giving random values between minus one and one, then the boundary condition that my partner already explained. 
Uh, this one is the method that we use to record the video. Say bird is the function to plot all the images. Then here is the for loop that record uh, through the time. And we are using the function CDF that consists in two for loops for moving in X and Y axis. For the results of the explicit Euler scheme in central differences, we see that it is a stable scheme for 128 nodes with dt equal to 10 to the power minus 6. However, as you can see from the CPU time taken to calculate the computation, it's pretty large and it goes up to almost around 30 minutes, 25 minutes to calculate the whole computation. And the error is, is accumulated at every time step. However, if we go to higher number of nodes with larger time step, the equation may not converge and we can have an overflow. So then, now I'm going to split the, the second approach with the spectral uh, methods. So here we have a program for the two approach. So here, as the same as the uh, last program, we define the initial condition. This one is for uh, select the method that we want to solve, the number of nodes, and we define the, the we discretize, discretize the x vector in the space domain, and then we change it to the to the uh, spectral domain to find the the 2D matrix of the horizontal and the vertical wavelengths. Then we find the uh, the magnitude of the of the wavelength k. As the same as before, we define a random values in the space domain, and then as we are working in the all the program in this spectral domain, we use FFT2 to change to the to the spectral domain. Uh, in the first method, we use the Laplacian function as the equation was explained, and then the Euler uh, approach that solved the Cahillier equation. So, for the results we, with the first conditions, we use the the same time step of the central difference. But as we can see, this this is not an stable solution. This time step is so huge that the accumulation error is so big that it, in in one point for each state, it increased in each iteration, get, uh, getting overflow. So for solving the, the the equation for this condition of 128 nodes, we have to reduce the time step it until 1.8 by uh, 10 minus seven. Uh, number values, higher number values of this time stepping give us overflow. As we can see, we can solve the equation for for the time uh, given, and it's pretty stable. Then, for the BDF AB approach, we did almost the same with the two equations that my partner has already explained. It. So this one is the the first one to find the the first value of the iteration, and then and then we find a new value using the old value and then we find the current the, the current value with the second equation that is already explained so from the results of the bdf AB scheme as you can see it's a semi-implicit scheme and it's much more stable than the central difference in this case we can actually move up to a large number of nodes which is 350 plus and we can use larger time step to calculate the computation because it's much faster that way and from the cpu time you can see that it's, it takes a, a lot less time compared to the central differencing. Huh. Central differencing. Yeah. And and since we are using FFT2, because we know that Fourier transform is Q-symmetric, and we can save a lot of time in the space domain by by calculating the derivative only for the half the nodes. So here, as we can see, uh, there are the the trends of the error evolution. For example, here in the Euler central difference, uh, the the rate of, of uh, the rate of decrease of the error is not as huge as the Euler in the spectral domain, but <coughs> is uh, and both of them are the three methods are in exponential way. But as we can see here, the IMAS BDF is the more stable of all the three, which has a less uh, decrease rate than the other the other two. For the concluding remarks, we can say that. The magnitude of error decreases with the increase in grid size, so the larger number of nodes we have, the less error we have at every time step. And with spectral methods, it's much more stable to find the derivative as, as we can impose 
conditions to prevent the overflow uh, or the floating point overflow as we say it and uh, the convergence of error is much faster in spectral methods compared to finite differences and the IMAX BDF is most stable integration scheme since we can use larger time step as I've said already before and it fasten up the process so the final thing in conclusion we can say is the accuracy of the results increases with the number of nodes and is higher when we implement spectral methods for solving a system of ODEs. That's all for today. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. watching us. Keep in touch.